Welcome to the weekend. I am so happy to have you joining me again this morning. We are going to be talking about a highly requested topic. There are a couple of reasons that I am choosing to talk about today's topic. One of them is a few weeks ago, I did a video sharing with you tips on how to be a little bit more classy and ladylike in social situations as well as in business situations. In addition to that, a couple days ago on my Snapchat, I did a little story talking about confidence. I talked about how to feel better about ourselves, how to have a higher level of self-esteem, how to stay clear of having low self-esteem or feeling down on ourselves, and how to learn to not compare ourselves to other people. Well, between the video comment section and my Snapchat comments, I cannot even tell you how many people reached out to me wanting me to talk about confidence and share it in a YouTube video. So that is what we are going to do today. For some of us, confidence comes very natural. For others, it doesn't come natural at all and it's very hard for them to have positive self-esteem about themselves. I think one of the key things that you have to do is you have to look at yourself how you see yourself and not necessarily how other people see yourself. One of the biggest mistakes that we make is we care too much what other people think of us, but it really isn't about other people in the first place. It's more how we see ourselves. Now, I am not saying that your loved ones, the people that you live with, your spouse, your children, your parents, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be open to hearing any advice they may have to better you as a person, especially if you're a child. But always remember that nobody defines you. And too many times we get hung up on worrying about what other people think or what other people are going to say. The biggest thing that you can do is let that go. That is number one to being able to achieve confidence. Something else that you need to recognize is that being confident about yourself is not the same as being confident in situations. We are all going to be in situations where we lack confidence because maybe we're not good at that skill. Maybe we need to ask for help. There is nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't mean that you don't have confidence in yourself as a person. So you need to keep the two separate. An example would be, I am not good on computers. <laughs> I'm not good with photography and video. I'm not good with lighting. <laughs> you would think that I would be because I'm doing all this, but if you only could see the behind the scenes and everything that I go through to even get started with a video, it would, <laughs> it would be a show in itself and you would get a good chuckle out of it. So I don't have confidence in that situation or in that task. And a lot of times I have to pull other people in, people that are more experts in that area to help me out. But that doesn't say anything about who I am as a person. My other little tip in that situation is be open to just asking people to help you. Again, it doesn't make you any less of a person. You know, we put so much emphasis in being good at everything, but nobody is good at everything. We all have our strong suits. We all have our weak suits. And again, once you recognize that, yeah, I have some great things about me. I am really good at a lot of things. Nobody can touch me in certain areas. That's how great I am at it. But there's gonna be a lot of areas in my life that I'm just not gonna be good at, except those don't be ashamed to ask for help in those areas. And the other thing too is learn to laugh at yourself. If I didn't learn to laugh at myself, I wouldn't be making these videos. Believe me, you have to just learn to go, there I go again, yep, classic me. And that's basically what it is. But again, these are situations, these are tasks. These are not how we feel about ourselves personally. If you have been following me long enough, you would be aware that my husband and I have five daughters. Our oldest is 24 and our youngest is 11. If there is one thing, and I know all of you parents out there can relate to this, one of the most important things that we want for our children is we want them to be happy and we want them to thrive. But in order to be thriving in life, you have to have good self-esteem. You have to feel good about yourself and you have to have confidence as a person. One of the best ways for your children 
To be confident and to have positive self-esteem lies with the parents. You set that tone early on, so make sure that you are doing all the necessary steps that it takes to raise your kids to be confident because they will thrive in anything they do later on in life if they have confidence and good, solid self-esteem. Let me just share with you one of the ways that I think you can do that, and this is something that I feel about myself and it's the way my husband and I have raised our girls. You know, we have no problem praising them, just like ourselves, on the things that we are really good at, but we also are not closed to telling them areas that they can improve themselves so that they can see that, hey, I don't have to be perfect at everything. Hey, there are areas that I need to work in. Quit trying to be so perfect. If you're always trying to be perfect at everything you do, including how you look, you're never gonna have self-confidence because nobody is perfect. So remember that. The other thing that I want to tell you to be very leery of, especially you younger girls that struggle the most with this, and I'm not saying there are people my age that definitely struggle with it, but I think it's a lot harder when you're younger. You know, you definitely do become more who you are, and you also become more accepting of who you are as you get older. So, so practice. Practice the skills early and do the necessary steps because when you're my age, a lot of those little things that bothered you when you were younger won't bother you anymore. Believe me, there were a lot of things that bothered me as well when I was in high school, in college, and even into my early 20s when I was starting to have a family. It's very easy to compare ourselves to other people. But one of the things you need to learn to do is recognize the triggers. And what I mean by triggers is what makes you feel good? Well, whatever makes you feel good is going to help you with your confidence. Maybe it's doing something in particular and every time you do it, you know you do a great job so you feel really good about yourself. Do that, make sure you're tapping into that. Let's say you're on social media and you're scrolling Instagram and Facebook all the time and you're seeing this glamorous, glorious life that all of your friends are having, which isn't really the truth, some of it is, but they're just not sharing all the negative. Nobody wants to put their dirty laundry out there they're only going to put the positives in their life. But you have to recognize they are no different than you. They have good days, they have bad days. Confident people still have bad days. We have down days. In fact, I have a blog post titled Down Days. I'll link it down below as well as in the corresponding blog post to this video. But if you find yourself on social media and you find yourself looking at pictures of other girls and comparing yourself to them or or wishing you could be like them, or they look like they have such a great life with their new husband or their new baby and you want that and you think they have it so much better than you, you're really wrong. You really are. If that's a trigger for you and you feel down when you are viewing that type of stuff, then you need to stop it because what you're doing is you're actually bringing in self-inflicted low self-esteem. You're bringing it on yourself by comparing yourself to these people that you follow. Maybe you need to not be getting on Instagram anymore. You have to find what tools you need to implement so that you can have more positive self-esteem and be more confident with yourself. Also, let me just say that confident people still get embarrassed. We, we, still, we still do things that we're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just did that. I'm so embarrassed. But one of the things that confident people know how to do is they just know how to laugh at themselves. They're not tripped up by it. Nobody, nobody is obsolete from doing something embarrassing throughout their life. It just happens. Just own it, laugh at it, move on, don't let it trip you up, and get over it. Don't talk about it. Don't go on and on and on when you're in a conversation. Nobody wants to hear about it, and nobody's gonna remember it but you anyway. All right, so now let's talk about what do we do in situations when someone tries to take that confidence away from us by maybe being cruel, being negative, talking about us, saying negative things to us. <laughs> well, what do I say to that? This is what I say. I say, who are they? Who are they anyway? Do they matter in your life? Or are they just an acquaintance? Is this person or these people gonna be in your life five years from now? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, 
Are they worth it? Now again, if we're talking about your relationship with your spouse or your children or your parents, we have to be open. We have to be open to some constructive criticism at times. That is how we learn and that is how we create a team. If you're closed down from that, those relationships will suffer. Those are relationships that you want to cultivate. So be open to hearing maybe some negative things because if the person, like your parents, are only looking out for your best interest and they want you to thrive or your spouse wants to talk to you because he wants your marriage to thrive because it is really about thriving in life folks it really is then you need to be open to it but if they don't matter it don't matter so remember that that is that is something that i always take as a tool is that little quote if they don't matter it don't matter. Meaning whatever they're saying about you doesn't matter. They don't define you. Nobody defines you. You define you. And if you make mistakes along the way, well, guess who's normal? <laughs> I know. Somebody has to tell you, you are. You're normal. <laughs> and the thing is, is we all do make mistakes. The, the key is you learn from them. You don't let them lower your self-confidence. You don't, you don't let them take away your self-esteem because it's all normal. We all make mistakes. Learn from them. If they, the person who wants to talk about you or bring you down, if maybe you did something against them and maybe they have some valid reason to be upset, it doesn't mean that they're classy by running their mouth. They're very unclassy. You know, maybe they're worth trying to mend the relationship. Maybe they're not, that's what you have to decide. But if you made a mistake and you did someone wrong, own it up, not publicly, privately. And if they wanna go public with it, well, that's their unclassy way of dealing with it. But that doesn't define you. I mean, if we're gonna walk around being wounded all the time because we let all of these people penetrate us with their words and their negativity, you're never gonna have confidence. You have to get over that. You have to move on. You are you. You are the best you. You are awesome. You have so many awesome traits. Another little thing I want you to remember, if you set this in your mind, even if you have to set it in your reminders, they have to go off every single day, do it, do it. Because you might need to hear this, especially if you are going through something. But always remember, hurt people hurt people. Okay, let me say that again. Hurt people hurt people. So if somebody is hurting, <laughs> misery loves company, folks, they're going to want to hurt. So if somebody is very unhappy with their life, they're going to want to bring other people down. That's not your problem. That is their problem, okay? Don't let your self-esteem be rocked or jolted because of it. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that these people never come to your face and say anything? Have you ever noticed that? They might be at a get together or a party for you, like you high schoolers or college kids. You kind of know what I'm talking about or it could be even a family, family gathering. Uh, watch my uh, holiday drama video. I talk a lot about um, animosity between family members, but yeah, if you, if, if you notice, they never come directly to you and say anything. They might be off standing by, looking at you, pointing, talking about you, getting other people to look at you. Believe me, those people they're talking to behind their back are laughing and thinking, how shallow, how classless is this person? They're not laughing at you. They're laughing at them, believe me. But it is very funny how they'll never come to your face. Boy, I wish, <laughs> I wish people like that would come to our face. Wouldn't that be awesome? But it'll never happen. Because there's such a thing called keyboard courage. That's where people can spit any venom they want behind the keyboard. They can do this through text message, Twitter, and you don't usually see it on Snapchat because uh, if they leave you a comment on Snapchat, nobody will see it. So they're not getting all the publicity that they think they're getting, which really they're just getting laughed at. So keyboard courage, don't be penetrated by any of that. The only small people are going to send things out on social media about somebody else. It's not, it's not classy people like you. It's, it's unclassy people. If you have someone in your life that is constantly bringing you down, that's where you have to ask yourself, 
Is this person worth keeping around? You know, you will come across relationships throughout your life that you really have to work at. They might not be a positive relationship, but they need to be worked at. This would be with your parents, your children, your spouse. There are relationships that are always worth fighting and fighting very hard for to mend. But if it's another type of relationship, even if it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend or something like that, or a friend, period, that's when you have to ask yourself, is this relationship serving me? If it's not serving you, maybe you need to have some confidence in yourself and take the big step and move on. So something to think about there. Well, there you have it. I hope you can go out there and be bold and be confident. You have so many awesome traits and characteristics about yourself and you are very beautiful, not only on the inside, but on the outside as well. Believe me, you need to see yourself through those binoculars, very important in life. Hold your head high, work on that posture like I talked about in my ladylike video and you are going to do just fine. Don't forget, everything will be in the drop down box below and always go to the corresponding blog post, which will be your first link because I always put extra nitty gritties in there and I will have blog posts that I have done that will go along with this topic as well as other videos that you will want to check out, including that being classy and ladylike video that has been very popular wow, with many of you in the community and I really appreciate your support with that video. As always, if I'm wearing something new, I will always have it linked below, so never worry about that. Unfortunately, this top is not new, <laughs> but I do always link anything that is new and linkable. The other request that I had was to link my makeup in my videos. Well, that takes a lot of work <laughs> and time, so I probably will not do that in every single video, but I did do it in today's video. So if you like the makeup look, and I'm just gonna tell you right now, this lip cocktail that I have on is the one I probably get asked about the most when I'm wearing it on Snapchat. So you may want to check it out, but again, you're going to have to go to the corresponding blog post link to get over to my website where I will have everything that I'm wearing on the face from, from primer to false lashes. I did it all for you, but I don't expect it in every video, but I did today. Well, thank you for joining me again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Please leave your comments and your suggestions down below. Let me know what other topics you would be interested in hearing. I know many of you are waiting on the dining video and I'm really excited to do that one. In fact, I think I'm going to do a two part series for that one. So stay tuned. I have so many things on my list of great upcoming content to share with you. So um, can't wait to get it out there. But thanks again for joining me today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Mwah.